Hey guys, so today I'm going to do a quick garden tour of our sidewalk garden. And last time I showed you that space, I think it was about mid-May, and I am blown away as to what a difference two months makes. All right, you guys, I'm going to start right here, and I will try to face away from the road to kind of minimize the hum of the cars. Uh, so the first thing I wanted to address, and you may see my shadow, hello, um, is all the damage that we had in the border this year. I don't know why, but for some reason people just picked a lot of flowers this year. They broke a lot of flowers. So I had to get out of my <laughs> passive aggressive sign, flowers have feelings, and it has been working so far. So we didn't have any more damage. Um, so I will mostly concentrate on the hell strip today because it looks beautiful and there are some things that are blooming in the border and I will point them out like the Virani Castrum right there, the white flowering plant that is swaying in the wind right now. Uh, but the first uh, plant that I'm going to start with is the true hyssop. So the agastache usually is called hyssop but this is the true hyssop or hyssopus it's a European medicinal plant and I started it from seed about three years ago because I just wanted to see what it looks like and it's really beautiful it's fragrant the foliage is fragrant bees love it and um, it kind of grows in part shade so if you are having difficulties growing salvias or lavender I think this is a good substitute because it kind of looks like that beautiful blue flowers too and the border and the hell strip look really wild which is the way I love it so there's some echinaceas starting to bloom and they've been attracting bees like crazy and uh, there's some gara here this plant is euphorbia or snow in the mountain it is a native plant, um, but it is quite an aggressive cell seeder. So if you plant it or start it from seed, you're definitely going to pull out the seedlings and uh, we'll have to thin it. But it's beautiful. It's just starting to bloom. And when it's in completely full bloom, it has these beautiful white tops. Um, this is uh, wild quinine. And... A friend of mine gave this to me because mine died for some reason. Sometimes they just like die on you. But this one has been here for a couple of years. I really love the structure of this plant, really love the foliage. It is a native plant, uh, blooms for a very long time. I really want like a whole patch of them right here. There's some echinaceas blooming in the main border with some phlox. And um, this whole combination right here is one of my favorites this year. Uh, this is Sedalsia. It is, again, American native uh, hollyhock. And it just has these beautiful dainty flowers uh, against the Russian sage. Just such a gorgeous combination. And these plants right here all together. So the echinacea, the sweetgrass totem pole right there. And I think I did a video on that plant. I love that grass. It's just such a strong grass, beautiful blue color. Just love everything about it. These echinaceas here, I had self-seed years ago and they're still here. I find echinaceas that are self-seeding perform much, much better than the cultivars that I buy in the store. So, this plant right here i want to talk about a little bit longer this is uh verbena hastata and it's the first time i've grown it i got it in the uh, local nursery it is a native verbena and it is so adorable you guys look at that now i don't know what that <laughs> black eyed susan is doing over there i think it's self-seeded um, from another part of the garden and I don't have any yellow colors here, but it's kind of okay. I kind of like that there. I may leave it. There's another self-seeding uh, echinacea. And this whole combination here uh, with a, a gastiki purple haze right here. This plant that is going out of bloom right now, that's Stachys humulo. 
Uh, it's a huge pollinator attractor, but obviously it's done right now. And then this plant here is world milkweed, which I started from seed last year. And it's finally bloomed this year. But even last year, like when it was just foliage, it was like really interesting texture plant. And this plant here, the drumstick allium, has been an amazing pollinator for me. Uh, just covered with bees all the time. And as you can see, like it's starting to flop right now a little bit because we had a really strong rainstorm yesterday. So things are kind of floppy at this time. It does tend to flop in very rich soil and part shade. So like that one right there, you see I had to stake all of that. I'm definitely going to replant those um, somewhere sunnier. Uh, this right here is one of the first dahlias that is blooming and I have to deadhead it. I mean, dahlias you have to deadhead regularly, otherwise they don't look that great. But this is Vancouver and it looks just like a chrysanthemum to me. Love that. The plant uh, right there, the dainty white flowers, that's Calamintha nepeta. Wonderful plant, very fragrant foliage, blooms all, all summer long. And the fever fuse are continuing to bloom. So I usually have two waves of fever fuse. The first wave that I showed you about a month ago, that was um, the plants that overwintered and bloomed. And these are from this year. So these are seedlings from this year. And I just have them dotted everywhere because they're just so pretty. Uh, this is a Joe Pye weed that is starting to bloom. This is baby Joe. It is significantly shorter than the regular <laughs> Joe Pye weed, which is like almost seven feet tall. And this uh, switchgrass, this is Shenandoah. I actually um, divided this grass early in the spring and I gave away some of it to a local park. They were doing some sort of a project for native plant uh, plantings. And I'm so glad <laughs> that I divided it because it was kind of spreading too much. Switchgrasses um, don't grow that aggressively, but they will spread eventually. And here I have some cosmos that I added in this part of the garden, some fever fuse, and the Cleomes are finally starting to bloom. And I get a lot of questions about how do I get my Cleomes get, uh, grow so large. So it is a specific variety, it is Queen Series. So when you're looking for seeds of Cleome, make sure that you get the Queen Series because they do sell uh, Cleome in the nurseries. It's usually proven winner of varieties, proven winner's varieties, excuse me. Um, Senorita Rosalita, which I have right there. There's the one in the border right there. But these are, um, the Queen varieties are much taller, much fuller. And um, the secret of growing Cleomis from seed is that you have to direct sow them in the fall because they like stratification and they like um, stratification that is not just cold, but repetitions of or alterations of cold and warm and cold and warm weather. And that's how they uh, sprout much, much faster. So over here, this is more of a cottagey garden. Um, and right in this spot, I had a hole here where I had the alliums and I planted some didiscus or blue lace flower and they all died. And if you guys think that I can grow whatever I want or I'm such a good gardener, no, things die in me all the time. So I had this hole here and I went to the nursery the other day and I saw these um, uh, cosmos six for two dollars fifty cents and i was like oh this is perfect so i filled in the spot with cosmos don't you just love when that happens like you find just the right plant and there's more cleome here and this is amidara which i grew from seed and i really love to use that flower in uh, flower arrangements more cleome here they, for some reason, really love that spot. And as you can see, the border is starting to get the elephant ears. 
And right here, this is one of the flocks. That's uh, Fran Franz Schubert, one of my favorites. Lilies are starting to bloom. That's Casablanca right there. And I do spray them um, at least once a week for deer. Deer will not touch the elephant ears, but they love the echinaceas, the lilies. So I have to be diligent and kind of train them away from my garden. Just wanted to show you what Calamintha nepeta looks like from this side. Such a wonderful plant, you guys. This is uh, three plants right here. And the garden looks really full and wild right now, just the way I like it. At least in this spot. I have some areas that are a little bit more manicured, but this I just love. I love the, the wild look of this. Echinacea pallida with Russian sage. Also wonderful combination. The traffic is starting to pick up. Sorry, you guys. Wanted to show you the Veronicostrum a little bit closer. I planted it against this arborvitae for the contrast of the dark um, foliage of the arborvitae and the lighter candle-like structure of the uh, Veronicostrum. Some echinaceas is still blooming. And uh, this is pretty much it for today.